There are a handful of vehicle designs that the general public can easily identify, both young and old. The Jeep from Wrangler, the Mini, the Beetle from Volkswagen, and of course this Porsche 911. This is the all-new 911 with the working name or chassis number 991, which we first saw at the Frankfurt Auto Show in the fall of 2011. With the introduction of this new 911, there was a big sigh of relief from Porsche enthusiasts because it looks like it should. It looks like a 911. But with any new advancement and modification of this iconic car, there's always critics. And the loudest ones are the ones that say it's become too big and it's lost its real sports car feel. The most significant change to the new 911 is the wheelbase. That's the distance between the front and rear wheels. That has been stretched by 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters, which is a huge departure. Add in 20 inch wheels and a slightly longer body overall, plus a lower roof line, and the design has been stretched. It has a lower look that is accentuated by the steeply raked front windshield. The headlights retain their oval shape, but the back has a more sculpted design with thinner taillights that some might say look Aston Martin inspired. Overall, there's no question this is a 911, but you know what, I would have preferred a slightly curvier design. This looks a little bit too flat along the sides. Now I've been on record to say that the Porsche Panamera, the four-door sedan, has the nicest interior in the automotive business. Now I know a lot of Audi and Jaguar fans would have something to say about that, but their interiors, the way they're put together, is spectacular. The same interior architecture has now spread from the Panamera to the Cayenne, now to this Carrera, and soon the Boxster, and then all Porsche products. The center console is higher with switches and great controls that will be instantly recognizable to Panamera owners. Even though the roof line is lower, headroom is ample, and the sunroof now tilts up for ventilation. With a full 10 centimeters added to the wheelbase, it obviously offers more legroom on the inside. The front passengers benefit from that. In addition, you get these fabulous brand new seats in the 911, and these ones have tons of adjustment and are very comfortable. The back seats are just for little kids, as they've always been. The interior, you sit very low in this car. It's got a lower roof now, and it really feels tight and like a sports car should. So for all of those people that say this is now a GT or a Grand Touring car, I couldn't disagree more. It still feels compact, especially on the inside. The first models to come from Porsche are the Carrera and the Carrera Cabriolet, and then the Carrera S and Carrera S Cabriolet. This is the Carrera S we have here. The new base motor is actually smaller than the outgoing engine. It's a 3.4 liter unit, but it has 350 horsepower, so more horsepower. The S model has a 3.8 liter flat six, and it produces 400 horsepower. The weight of this new larger car is lower than the outgoing model due to the higher strength steel, aluminum, and composite materials. Even though these new cars have more power, they offer up to 16% better fuel economy, and they're faster. The Carrera, as seen here, can make a run to 100 kilometers an hour in just 4.3 seconds. Now, one advancement I'm not too crazy about is the new power steering. It's electromechanical, and it feels overly boosted in low-speed city driving, like there's no effort. On the highway, it firms right up, and it gives you that direct feel that you really look for in a Porsche, where the steering wheel is connected to the front wheels and gives excellent feedback. You get that at high speed, not really at low speed. Other advancements include an auto stop feature that switches the engine off at traffic lights and a substantially modified suspension. Now, the biggest improvement in my mind is the suspension. With the older car, the car called the 997, when you didn't have it in the sport suspension, it would bounce along over bumps and it felt very artificial, like it was too soft and you had to go directly to sport to get that dynamic drive. With this new model, even with the sport suspension off, the car feels like it has regular passive shocks, meaning just regular springs and shocks. It has an excellent feedback, so you don't have to go directly to the sport button to make 
make the car feel sporty. The biggest complaint I have about this particular press unit, it doesn't have a manual transmission. One of the big features of this new car is the fact that it has the world's first seven speed manual transmission, six gears and the seventh gear is basically an overdrive. Hey, I would have liked to drive it. In fact, I always like to drive a 911 with a manual transmission. I know the PDK is faster. It does everything better than a human can, but you know what? After two days, I am bored. As I mentioned, there's a lot of people think that this car is too big, it's too soft, it's too plush, and it's moved too far away from what the original 911 stood for. But you know what? I'm not in that camp. I'm glad that Porsche is always pushing with new technologies and thinking outside the box because they help bring the whole automotive community along with them. And that means that everybody benefits, both young and old. Looking for a high-performance vehicle? We have tons on our website at drivingtelevision.com.